In the last episode, we discussed the choices we all have in choosing your ideal yacht and the steps you can take to get the best boat for you. This week, John gets to enjoy sailing the performance catamaran he built 20 years ago, reaching up to 16 knots under spinnaker. And that's got to be a weird feeling. So welcome everyone to another Barefoot Doctors episode and we just thought we'd share with you um, an update of what's been happening for us. And yeah and there's been some really exciting news or, or offer anyway. The person that bought my old boat called Alberdash is actually needing to deliver it and he's a bit short of crew so he saw our episode 30 the boat ablaze <laughs> disco inferno and he has said we obviously need a bit of a a release and to get out on the water again so that was a lovely gesture yeah. and and certainly we're just in the middle of making sure we can do that mm -hmm. i'm certainly don't have any any commitments well i think it'd be really good for you to go and have some blokey time and do some sailing and i am going to go and visit my family down south yeah you were always had that plan so yeah. yeah that should be really good i mean i suppose it's really nice on a number of levels actually this chap obviously bought the boat off me a year ago and clearly he was quite happy with the boat so other or happy with the deal oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Otherwise you wouldn't be getting that's an right offer. um and he's a lovely guy so it should be a great trip i hope we the it's a delivery from early beach to bundaberg which is about 350 miles he's not wanting to sail at night so we're sailing through the daytime having a nice rest You're very civilized very actually. civilized so yeah. that's that's quite exciting yeah so and i think that's gonna we'll consider him the cheer up committee <laughs> that's right. i think you should tell everyone what the update is as far as the boat goes well really there is no change in the situation at surprise, all. Surprise, surprise. We haven't heard anything from the insurance about a payout. And the other thing in relation to the investigation is that hasn't even been done yet either. Yeah. So we are still waiting for this all to be finished. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, I'll go sailing. Okay. Are you sure you're going to be able to manage without uh, me, honey? I think I'll. <laughs> Love you honey, Love see you, you soon. Bye. So we are doing a delivery trip from Early Beach to Bundaberg, which is about 350 miles. The wind forecast is light basically. Um, but the thing, the trouble you have sailing south on the east coast of Australia is that usually the trade winds blow from the southeast. So going south you're usually against the trade winds. So you've always got to look for this window where the wind shifts either to the east or to the north. And so we left this morning because the wind was due to shift to the east um, about midday and in fact it did but the winds are very light it's only it's under 10 knots and um, we're sailing along with um, one engine on it relatively low rev but we're doing quite nicely we've got the code zero out so that's it there and we're doing about eight knots of boat speed so obviously engine assisted unfortunately but otherwise we'd only be doing probably five knots or so so our first stop off for tonight is the middle percy island which is about 120 miles from early so we started at about 5 or 5 30 this morning so we're going to be arriving probably about uh, 9 30 tonight We started up at Early Beach, which is up here, with Sunday Islands around here. Mackay is there, and 
Percy Island is down here. So that's 120 miles. Reminiscing. <laughs> sleep from hell time. <laughs> a mangrove sleep as your wall. <laughs> we'll take up the front. It's beautiful up there. Beautiful. Life on Albert. As one should keep the maintenance up on the yacht. Here's Matthew having a polish. He's polishing his stainless, that is. What a glorious day out. Lovely, lovely blue turquoise water. Deck hand doing his job. What a lovely day. Caulfield disappearing. The sun is setting. The clouds are going. We're only got. We've now only got 35 miles to go. So that's the view. Just next to Middle Percy Island, which is behind us. So we left in the dark, so we couldn't really film. We're just passing South Percy, from up the rocks. Oh, it's starting to rise. Six knots of wind, so pretty pathetic. Because we've got the screecher out again and the engine on. One engine to um, give us a bit of pace. We're trying to get in before that is civilized out tonight again and it's another hundred mile journey. We've woke up at five, now it's about six and we are hoping to be there about 6 p.m. When we arrived at Kemper last night there was 18 boats anchored there which is really unusual. Um, it's because there's been like strong winds blowing for the last three or four weeks so all the people that are wanting to head south couldn't so they this was the first weather window so at the first sign of the weather being good not blasting from the south um, everybody headed south so that's why there's so many people at middle percy you can see we're being followed here by Honahal as well they left just behind us but clearly they've got their engine on as well and they're motoring quite fast catching us up even shock horror multi harmonical catching us up it's all due to the, the iron spinnaker anyway catch you later our so trip today is from middle percy island around the outside of mainland australia rockhampton's down here which is Hampton's down there which is central queensland and we're going to the keppel islands which is just off rockhampton so calm, even the wind generator is not rotating. Less than five knots. There are whales, but difficult to catch on film. Fair distance away too, mind you. I told you the first one yesterday was only about 100 metres off. Oh, really? But I thought with your sailing experience, you'd be overly oh, sick of whales by now. It's really hard to catch whales on film. So this is 
algae, but a lot of people call it coral spawn, which is a misnomer. It's got nothing to do with coral. It's just a specific type of algae that grows in tropical waters. There are some whales up ahead too, but they've been too far away to film, which is very sad for you guys. Okay guys, for people who are interested, what we're doing here is we're going very deep, so we're sailing with the wind almost right up our backsides, which means that the asymmetric spinnaker doesn't work on the prodder because it's too much sheltered or covered by the mainsail. So we pull the foot of the, or the tack of the spinnaker across to the windward side of the boat, which is down there, um, and that way it comes into free air and fills more effectively, and as you go deeper, we pull it more and more across um, onto that onto that cleat at the front of the boat. So that's how we work it, um, even with an asymmetric spinnaker um, when we're going very deep. So we're now doing seven knots, uh, whereas um, you know before and, and the, the wind speed's only nine knots. So it's pretty good, even though it's a fairly pathetic angle because we're going so deep. Pathetic, as in uh, you don't have you're not creating very much wind speed. You're actually killing the wind speed as you accelerate downwind you essentially um, annihilate the wind pressure in your sail, so it's a really awkward angle to sail. But anyway, we're doing fine, we're doing seven knots, which we're very happy with, considering before we were not, there was no wind at all actually, so, so finally we've got our sails working, so that's all good. So, we'll see how we go.
So, morning of the third day, we woke up at 5 a.m. to leave just before dawn, and so the sun is just starting to glow on the horizon. The wind is soft again, kind of what happens sometimes, but it's about six knots, but we are motoring at six or seven knots, so there's almost no no breeze at all. But we have to wait, hopefully the wind will pick up a bit. But today it is forecast to be variable and pretty some wind, some no wind. So we are thinking it's going to be another day of using a lot of fuel. So today we're leaving from Great Keppel Island, which is just off the mainland from Rockhampton in central Queensland. Then we head down the coast uh, we're going to go 80 miles today, we're taking, ending up uh, just above where we were originally planning just so we can get in before dark because we have to go up a creek. So that's 1770, town of 1770. And that is the Keppel Island shrinking away into the background as the sun is rising. No wind, wind generator is not even turning. So it's now 8 a.m. So we've had three hours. We were doing quite nice sailing with the wind at about six, oops, with the wind at about 60 degrees, but now it's gone directly to the southeast, directly on our nose. And we're just passing Cape Capricorn, which is the one of the major capes on the east coast of Australia, just above Gladstone. So we're motoring around that and hoping the wind's going to veer one way or the other but unfortunately when it comes from the southeast that is the the typical trade wind angle and it wasn't meant to do this until midday but we've lost four hours of sailing which is really frustrating but anyway there you go weather forecast again not quite right but roughly right just got the timing wrong this is Curtis Island and that is Cape Capricorn so we are right here at the moment and this is the very narrow channel you can go up through behind Curtis Island if you're coming south against a strong wind as long as you go across a high tide and relatively shallow ground. And this is a lovely coast so there's lots and lots to see, fantastic sailing, amazing anchorages, wonderful beaches like we've been sailing past beaches that are like five miles long, just pristine white sand, just lovely. So if you ever get a chance to come sailing in this coast, take it because the weather's great except when it's going from the wrong direction or you're going in the wrong way, you're going the wrong way. So um, yeah, I suppose southeasterly trades blow. So what people normally do is sail north um, while the trades are blowing and about October, November, people head south because that's when you get northerly. So, you know, you can ride those favorable winds quite successfully and make life easy instead of doing what we're doing, which is a um, delivery trip against the trade winds. So the wind's about 10 knots. It's actually quite a nice day, but the wind's heading us a bit. So we are trying to keep high, make our way around the point that's just in the, on the horizon over there. That's Busted Point. dropping out and starting to die on us even worse so now we're just motoring along and sails are flapping a lot but behind us is the uh, cargo containers for the uh, coal and the gas so this is the mooring area for Gladstone so we've sailed past all these ships I think we counted about 18 ships altogether three gas ones and the rest were coal Busted head. Busted head is up ahead. So that's the corner. 
that we turn around and go around to 1770 just to the south about 11 miles south of there and we've got to get there quickly because there's a southerly change of 25 knots coming through later today sometime oh well that didn't work uh, we'll just leave it in anyway so here we have the, uh, the outer rocks at busted heads and there's three sets of rocks the lighthouse behind so this is another major point on the east queensland quiet coast really safe anchorage around behind there nice place to go pancake creek apparently which what is what was that I said I got a seamanship. I can rope drag him in the motor, we'll come back towards the coast. Oh, that one. So, completely, completely against the predictions of the Weather Bureau, we now have a northeasterly wind, which is really surprising, which has meant we've been able to get our um, screecher up or the code zero and sail along on a favorable angle which is amazing after being stuck going hard on the wind or just into the wind. It is a narrow entrance, narrow channel and a little marina into the left as you come in but apparently especially in this corner it's a very narrow that's only two boat lengths wide as in two albedash boat lengths wide and um and it's at low tide it goes down to 600 millimeters apparently as in two feet Okay guys, so since I've come off the boat, I've been asked so many times by so many of my friends and family, how was it for me? How did it feel? And um, it was actually quite interesting because it was weird. Like um, obviously I built the boat, I walked onto the boat and everything, I could remember every curve and every bit of the boat that I'd built 20 years ago and now it wasn't mine. And when we left it we were going to a brand new boat but this time I don't have a brand new boat it's at the bottom of the ocean so all these kind of mixed emotions as I'm going onto the boat and I was a little bit nervous approaching the boat too actually because the the new owner who's a really nice guy when he first got the boat he said oh he's going to put on double wheels and it's going to refashion the entry and take a chainsaw to the the saloon entry and all that sort of stuff and I was thinking oh my god what am I going to see is what's going to be like and I got on board the boat and it was almost identical. Like there was almost no difference visibly. He'd done a lot of work to put on gear, like um, wind, gear, wind instruments. He'd replaced gas piping. He'd replaced lots of electronic uh, wiring and those sort of things. But on the surface, it was exactly the same, which was kind of lovely because I knew where everything was. So I got on the boat and it was identical to what it used to be like when when I used to sail the boat so it was like a bit like back to the future it's all exactly the same as in the 18 years or so that we were sailing it so 
brought back lots of lots of memories on the other hand it actually reinforced for me the difference between a performance catamaran and a leopard 50 or a luxury but slower boat we did really big speeds on that trip when the wind blew most of the time it didn't blow we were doing commonly 14s and 15s and up to over 16 knots so that was fun but the comfort of the leopard you completely lost it sails easily but you got to work it now you got to be on the deck and it's you get spray over the deck and all that sort of stuff discuss all that before so i'll go through all that again we're really missing having a boat uh, we're still working on tying something down for the future but there's a long wait for new boats when you order them so we're really looking for something that's available in a much shorter time frame because there's no way that we can go for two years without another boat and we've had some lovely offers from various people in various places but it's very frustrating because really we should have been on the boat sailing you know east coast the us and then going to the bahamas in a few months time so and then we we're going to go over to the med so we're still aiming to go over to the med for next summer in the med so april may june that sort of time we're really hoping to be able to get something happening there so we're putting our feelers out and waiting patiently. And actually, no, we're waiting very impatiently. I am very impatient to get going. It's, um, it's very hard not having a boat. I suppose it's just a lesson in patience and waiting, although we've done it for so long up until getting the Ultra Dash that, um, that my tolerance for waiting is significantly lower now than it was then. So. We had a little taste of it and it's taken away from us. Cruel. But anyway, that's life and we will work our way through it and move on and get something else happening as soon as we possibly can. So we'll keep you posted on the progress and hope you enjoyed this episode. Like, subscribe, blah, 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 all the rest of it. And we'll see you next time, guys. All the best. Bye. Let's make up a big bonfire. Stars as our lighters and throw our problems in the flame. Throw our problems in the flame. If you have liked this episode, hit the like button, subscribe for free, and ding the dong so you don't miss your fix of the next exciting episode. Love and help from the Barefoot Doctors. I see the smoke in the mirrors I'm holding the key One step away from salvation